What happens if you take too much vitamin D? It can happen, it does happen, because people really tout the benefits of vitamin D supplementation so much that I think people tend to overdo it. So it's important to know what goes on in your body and how you might be able to help mitigate it a little bit. Today's video is sponsored by Thrive Market. So go ahead and check them out. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So no matter what kind of eating style or eating pattern you have, they probably have something for you. It's like a one-stop shop. So maybe you're paleo, maybe you're keto, whatever. You can filter by different diet type. You can select what you want, add it to your cart, do whatever you want to do. The prices are super competitive. A lot of times you'll find better prices on Thrive Market than you will at a lot of grocery stores. And it gets delivered to your doorstep in a couple of days and makes it super easy. Plus, because you're watching a video that they're sponsoring, that link down below will save you 25% off your first order and you'll get a free gift. So check them out down below in the description after this video. Too much vitamin D leads to what is called hypercalcemia, okay? That is where the storage form of calcium that is in your bones goes through what's called resorption. It goes into the bloodstream. And if you have too much calcium going into the bloodstream, it A, weakens the bones, but B, also leads to potential atherosclerosis and also calcification of the arteries, like stiffening of them, right? We don't want a bunch of calcium in there. Calcium's good for bone integrity and for all kinds of different, you know, nerve signaling and just actin myosin for the muscle to contract and, you know, everything you name it but we want it in its right place because it's very excitatory, okay? So we don't want to have this calcium that is triggering the stiffening of the arteries. So what do we do? How much vitamin D do we take in? Like how much, how do we modulate this? Does that mean that if we go out and we sit in the sun for too long, we're gonna just soak up so much vitamin D that we cause a problem? Well, it's not quite that simple. It's a lot easier to overdo vitamin D with supplementation than it is to overdo it in the sunlight, okay? You have a lot of different processes that are occurring. Like when you take in vitamin D from the sun, you absorb it, the vitamin D binds to a vitamin D binding protein, then it travels to the liver where it's hydroxylated and turns into calcidiol, and then that calcidiol goes through another, uh, through hydroxylase 25 and turns into calcitriol, and that's the actual bioavailable form. Then it has to bind to a receptor. My point in saying all that gobbledygook is simply to explain that it's not that easy to just like overdo it on sunlight because there's multiple conversion processes and enzymatic processes and storage forms. But when you're taking a supplement of vitamin D3 in a synthetic form, you are, you're effectively giving yourself the bioavailable form right then and there, okay? Now in the body when it's received naturally, it's really only active for like 15 hours as a half-life. So, you know, like 30 hours where it can actually really do its job. When you take it in a supplement form, that could be potentially different. And I'm not saying that vitamin D supplementation is bad per se. I will go on record and say that personally, I'm more of a fan of like cod liver oil. I'm more of a fan of getting it in a natural way where you're getting it alongside vitamin A and alongside omega-3s in sort of a balanced form. But that's just my opinion. You don't have to take that to the bank per se. The body does do a really good job of regulating it though. And one of the things I wanted to mention was magnesium. Okay, and I talked about this in another video, but magnesium may actually regulate our vitamin D levels quite a bit. Vitamin D and magnesium really work synergistically, like almost required for one another. Okay, there's a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, took a look at 180 people, and I talked about this in another video, so you may recognize this study, but 180 people, and they had them take a magnesium supplement and the dosage based upon how much food they were eating that was rich in magnesium and how much calcium they were taking in from their diet. They were really trying to modulate how much they would give them. Okay, well, here's what was wild. They found that when they had magnesium supplementation at play, that their vitamin D levels would increase if they were on the lower end. So if they were below 30 nanograms per milliliter, their vitamin D levels would go up. Magnesium actually made it go up. But if their vitamin D levels were higher at baseline, magnesium actually brought it down. So usually like in today's world, we, like so many of us are so deficient in magnesium, we think about quelling vitamin D and it, it sounds terrible. Like why would we ever wanna do that? But we actually need to be careful of that in today's world where a lot of us are getting our vitamin D from a supplement form. So when we have magnesium at play and at the proper levels from our diet and from food and you know from proper supplementation, we can modulate where our vitamin D levels are. Another thing to pay attention to is that there are some bits of evidence that suggest that taking in 
appropriate amounts of vitamin D, like from the sun, or possibly even lower levels of vitamin D supplementation, like one to 2,000 IUs, can actually bring up magnesium too. So there's sort of a two-way street that's happening there. But what do you do? Like, how do you sort of avoid overdoing the vitamin D? There's a couple of things to pay attention to. Modulate it based upon your activity level outside, okay? If you are outside a lot in the sunshine in the summer, reduce your vitamin D intake. You don't need to be taking in a bunch of supplements in the summer if you're outside. Okay, our bodies are ruthlessly efficient. It only takes like 10, 15, 20 minutes of sunlight to get an adequate amount of vitamin D. We don't need to be like soaking up a bunch from supplements too during the summertime. Okay. Also, bioavailable vitamin D in a supplement form that, or just any kind of just even synthetic vitamin D like in most supplements, it's going to act relatively quick within the body. So you can really modulate when you take it based upon days that you're in the sun, even in the winter time. So what I typically do is I'll take more cod liver oil and get more vitamin D during the winter months where I'm not in the sun quite as much. But still, if I'm outside in the sun on a given day, I will back that down a little bit in terms of what I take in terms of an exogenous form because I know I'm getting it from the sun. The other thing that I always make sure of is my magnesium level are stable. I pay much more attention to my magnesium levels than I do to my vitamin D in terms of my intake because magnesium plays a role in like 300 different enzymatic functions, many of which are involved in vitamin D uh, proper you know, conversion, proper overall receptors and all that. So I know that I'm covering more bases by taking in magnesium and I can take that at a neutral amount throughout the course of the year. Whereas vitamin D is a little bit more complicated to monitor. I'm not saying don't focus on vitamin D, but I am saying you should focus on getting it from a whole food form or a whole food supplement form like, again, cod liver oil, and focus on magnesium as the potential supplementation, usually leaning in towards like magnesium malate or dimagnesium malate or magnesium glycinate, which is magnesium that's bind to glycine. Those are my two favorite forms of magnesium. So I hope this video could shed some light on the fact that vitamin D isn't always what it's made out to be and getting it from a whole food form is always best. I'll see you tomorrow.